What is up, YouTube? McIntyre here. Today, I got a new video for you guys. We're going to be talking about Murden and going over a build that I'm really having a lot of fun with right now. Uh, I call it the Floaty Murden build. Just going to quickly go through the talents. We're not going to talk much about them, and then we're going to give you guys a gameplay. So at level one, we're going to be taking Dwarf Block. This is where a lot of the build strength comes from. It allows you to just jump in on people and duel them out because you are going to get block charges after jumping. I'm at level four. We're going to be taking Reverberation. This is going to reduce the cooldown on her heroic ability it's also going to reduce the attack speed of them as we w this is going to pair really nicely as we continue to go into the build at level seven we are going to be taking given the axe there was a little time where heavy impact was really powerful and while i don't think that it is a terrible ability i think given the axe is just going to give you a lot of power and strength i think it's just one of murden's best talents so for that, we're going to be taking it, and it's also going to synergize very well with our 13 talent. So at level 7, we're going to take Given the Axe. At level 10, we are going to be taking Avatar. While the health is important here, the most important part about Avatar is the ability to level it up at level 20, which we'll talk about in one second. At level 13, we're going to be taking Bronze Beard Rage. Uh, deal 44 damage per second to nearby enemies and heal for 75% of the damage dealt this way. Uh, this is also going to increase our basic attack damage to heroes that are stunned, slowed, or rooted. So this is going to pair really nice with the Given the Axe. Uh, it's going to give us some sustain. It's going to give us some power. Um, at level 16, where the build got its name, Dwarf Launch, we're going to increase the range of our Dwarf Toss, but in hitting enemy heroes reduces its cooldown by 3 seconds. So while this is really good with heavy impact, you know, in most cases is Murden, you're going to jump in and you're going to stun them anyways uh the slow effect that the level seven would have given you will kind of bleed away with the stun as it does last 1.25 so while it technically will allow the level seven talent will allow you to land storm bolts more often because of the 80 percent slow it's not gonna really change the engage that you have as murden also you know thunderclap is a slow and usually is what's cast before you try to hit land your storm bolt so at level 16 though we are going to be taking dwarf launch we're going to be jumping in there we're going to be getting into the middle of the enemy team and and kind of beating them up um, and then at level 20 we are going to be taking unstoppable force so while not only does this give us 20 armor it gives us cooldown on both our thunderclap and our dwarf toss obviously it doesn't give cooldown on storm bolt on auto attack but you know that's a quest right so you'll be decreasing all the cds on your character as you punch the enemy you know notably reverberation is going to be reducing the cooldown on avatar so we can have it back up if we're dwarf launching in we're going to be getting block stacks um, and we're going to be able to re dwarf launch again pretty quickly after and we'll have 20 armor so it's going to be much harder for them to kill us uh, this is the build uh, now we're going to be jumping into a gameplay and you guys can kind of see it all come together all right guys so we are jumping into this game one thing that i want to note right off the bat and this is just in particular when it comes to builds in general uh, that sometimes the enemy team's comps sway one way and you have to opt into different talents because of that. Um, and in this case, I think with this game, the most notable talent that we need to get rid of is Dwarf Block, actually. Um, so there's two ways we can do this. One, we can go Third Wind, which is pretty good versus their team because of the poke from Li Ming and Izibo, um, and you know, even being on Harnal Muro, there's a lot of walls we can jump and there's a lot of walls they can't follow past. You know, if we were to jump this wall, right? We can pass our, proc our passive. Um, or you can go Stormbolt. If you're really confident in your Stormbolts, usually how I play Murden is I'll go Stormbolt. Um, you know, and my healer's Malfurion, so I have decent sustain from that. Uh, you can go either one. Here though, block is gonna be pretty bad versus their team, especially, you know, considering they have a Lucio. If they had a Tracer, a Tychus, or just like not many heavy hot autoers, then I don't think Dwarf Block is very good, so we aren't gonna start that. Um, and instead, I'm gonna go Perfect Storm. Obviously, you can again take whatever talent you want here. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna start stacking it up now. Really, in this point in the game, we just want to try to land Qs. Taking damage from them doesn't really do anything, obviously, because of our passive. So if we play really weird or strangely like this, you know, that's okay, because it'll guarantee Storm Bolts, right? Which is really all we care about. You know, we, we almost, we want, we want Joe to walk up and start punching us. Like that, right? Because that guarantees that we land Storm Bolts. And this damage, while, you know, it does, it's, it's not like it feels great, 
Um, because of our passive, we'll just proc and get it all back anyways. So yeah, so the nice thing about Murden in particular is that he can, uh, he, he, he can be in really unsafe places and still be safe. So, you know, walking up into their team here, that was a pretty bad storm bolt and just kind of messing with them. I'm under like little threat right now. Oh my God, these storm bolts are really bad. And me trading, trading damage in the shield's not so good. But like once his shield, oh, this guy's just dead. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna be pretty upset about that. So Naziva should have died there. I'm now zero for three. So even after missing every storm bolt that I've thrown in this game, I'm still putting on a lot of pressure, right? Uh, and we're getting that passive proc value here, as you can see. Uh, the other thing that Murden does really well is gank lanes. This is gonna be a bit of a tougher lane, but I think if Sonya hits her spear, if I hit Stormbolt, it always jukes right there. Okay, so we're zero for four now. And bottom lane died during that as well, so just all around pretty sad. We have kept them off of the camps. I've landed a total of three Stormbolts. I think I'm probably thinking too much. Zero for five. Probably thinking too much about these Stormbolts. Instead of just kind of naturally letting them go. Again, the, again, going back to just... It's okay to take some damage. You have a healer. Oh, this guy should die here. Never mind. He's actually a god player. My uh, Matthew's here. This is sketchy. Butcher probably dies. But we'll get a Stormbolt stack here. Nice. Not only do we get a stack, but if you kill somebody after storm bolting them, you get three stacks of storm bolt towards your quest. So that's really good. So we'll just look for like jump stuns here. Might be able to oh, if you charge the right target. And kill that there. Moonfire. Oh man, butcher, butcher, butcher. So yeah, so we're getting our passive going again. You can see our health just going back up. We have a math uh, we have a Malfurion heal on us. You can body block this, actually. Ah. So level 7 comes around. Time for giving the axe. And this is where I think Muradin's first power spike in general comes in. Once you get to this talent, after you hit W, I mean, you, you just beat people down. Like, this Matthew should die here, technically. Yeah, if he were to try to duel me, I might even be able to beat him down. Or at least waste... A lot of his mana. He's gonna go. So I'll just wait for the butcher charge. The guy did a good job there and went into the minion, so I couldn't storm bolt him. I might be dead. Ooh, good mean combo. She hit me with. She didn't hit me with all the missiles. She, the, the orb hurt though. So oh, bad, bad gank. Good rotation from them. Not really sure why they all rotated top when the shuttle is bottom, but you know, sometimes the decisions we make in Heroes of the Storm aren't aren't the best. Maybe we can pick this in Zebo on rotation if Butcher comes. I mean, we should have been able to. You just want stacks, though. Again, you you can just put yourself out of position. It's Meriden. Doesn't really matter. Oh, nice. As long as your jumps up and you avoid ways for them to cancel your jump. Like, I don't want to let Joe like, use her W and then when her W's casted, go for a jump, right? Like, that would be bad. They're on the Samurai. They probably already have it. Yeah, I was going to say, we need to... He's got Pale Horse. We need to... Oh! She blinks? I'm just going to run. I don't like this fight. Butcher's dead. Mean gets resets here, but we'll use this time to get stacks. The other thing is they have Lucio. 
This is like, these are not the fights we want. I try on stacks. Oh, yeah. Just did the thing I told myself not to do. Walt, you guys get a, get a get good example in of the only thing that can stop my bird and jump. <laughs> and getting caught by it. It's like bad. It's bad on me because I think I, I panic. They also have Lucio, which I also said. So they can kind of run you down. This might be the worst part of the map for Murden, because like everywhere I jump, I'd have to go. I would have had to calm down here and jump up that way, maybe. But yeah, that's a pretty it's a pretty unsafe spot for me to be. It's all good. We're almost quested. I don't know if this guy is unsolvable or not. That's a good kill. Now we're quested. So we have battle momentum on Stormbolt. Should be able to kill Matthew here. I would have liked, I should have storm bolted him there on the charge, get another quest tech. So we'll play out of position again. We just want to create pressure for our team on the map. And we can create vision this way too. Lucio's Q can boot, boot my jump as well. Like you'll see a lot of Lucio players try to do that. But as long as I kind of keep space on both of those things, I should be fine. All right, so Butcher's gone in. Just want quest. Bottom of enemy our Q. Ming's gonna get a reset. We gotta watch the orbs here. We might be able to kill this Joe. Maybe not. Maybe. Nah. Oh. Still have Avatar. Thought we need to use it though. Try to build some stacks. Just always questing, always questing. And then every time you get poked, just grab a globe, let your passive start proccing, and you'll get your health back as you rotate to your next objective or. Shouldn't maybe just roll through the storm bolt. They're gonna do their camps. Go deal with this Matthew. He's not even here. All right, so 13 bronze beard. He might be able to kill this guy. He's gonna W. Yeah. All right, he's dead. Oh, we mod. Oh, yeah, that last, that last right actually does so much damage to me because of my hold. Oh, no. <laughs> I think we would have killed him had we not mod. My stone bolt kind of bricked because I charged off of it. it wasn't It actually wasn't a bad mod though. I just should have switched to something else. And then I should have backed up too, right? So he's going to last right to me every single fight. I don't think it really matters. So as we get to the level 20, we should be able to jump in, jump out. I would say that Matthew on last rights is probably the worst thing for my avatar heroic as well though. So like out of all the abilities in this game. Missing Sonya to have everybody. They also have Maul, or I mean not Maul, Lucio, so they can just they can just run people down. I should get to a point eventually where I'm able to 
really dictate the pace of these fights. Alright, that's fine. We got stacks. That's all that really matters. We'll get our passive, we'll get our passive proc in here. The other thing that's nice about Bronzebeard is it actually gives Murden wave clear. Which he's typically terrible about. But you can solo soak XP. I mean, you can see here, I've hardly soaked XP this game. Um, it's a bit easier on this map. Right? Not as much. Uh, he's going to juke. I'm gonna go towards our samurai. We should fight this actually. We get this now. I mean, they really just had no right to fight a 4v5 there. Good rotation for my team. I think we are supposed to just push with this thing too. Oh, scammed. We do have Zag though. We get some passive XP going. Yeah, so now, so now I can jump in pretty willy-nilly, and I can actually get to backline as well. <laughs> Let's see. It's not a great fight. We don't have Zagara here. And again, the Lucio, right? Like, once they get going like this, once they get moving into us, it gets hard. Oh, that's a good, good hook there from that. My bronze beard is popping off. I turn it. Oh, I want my passive proc. Need my passive proc, please. There it is. The health going. I'll be back to full. Get honestly. There for some Q stacks here. Somebody will be backing. <laughs> so we're 29 now after missing seven storm bolts in the first five minutes of the game. I would say to so the other build that I really like is Murden and. This one, because I'm showcasing the video, uh, I'm kind of going this build, but the other one that I like is actually this pretty much exact build except Haymaker at level 10 and at level 20 Rewind. Um, but the Stormbolt at level 1 is important if you go Haymaker 10 with Rewind at 20 because it's kind of what allows you to, I guess, one-shot people, right? The old Stormbolt, Rewind, Stormbolt, Haymaker. In most cases, if you stack your Q decently well, you'll one shot most characters. Pretty much unkillable though at this point. It's gonna get it'll get even harder when I get the permanent 20 armor, although I think the game is over here. So you guys might not get to see like the power spike of the build. Yeah, you're not. Ah, oh, this is really sad. So at level 20, when you hit 20, you get the avatar that not only will it give you 20 armor, which is insane to think that you just exist with 20 armor, right? But it also reduces the CD on all of your abilities per auto attack, right? Um, so as you saw there, when I just dove the tower, like to Murden, towers don't mean anything. Um, and it just turns out that when you jump into towers, typically as Murden, people run away. Uh, they don't like run into you, they run away. And the reason for that is because you just have so much health as this character. 
and realize when you jump in you're gonna get armor right um, when you hit your ultimate at 20 you'll have armor uh, so it, it just increases the resistances that you have every time you jump but that's gonna be it for this video guys thank you all so much I appreciate you for checking out this video let me know in the comment section below what characters you guys want to see builds for in the future uh, I'm gonna be trying to upload these once a week to the channel so make sure to like and subscribe ring that bell thanks for checking out the video until the next time I'll see you then Cheers.